Here we are. We're episode three of the Unplanners. Hello, David. Hi, Ian. <laughs> uh, how do we get to episode three already? What, what are we going to be talking about today? So today we're going to be talking about the, uh, what dials should we have on our dashboard in these times of uncertainty? And um, just throwing forward next week, we're going to talk about agility. And we know we t- we've talked a couple of times about how a lot of people are using the word agility and a lot of people are using it in its correct term. And some people are just kind of using it. Um, but what is agility and how do you create an agile mindset, which are, you know, is really important. So we're going to talk about that next week. And this week um, we said we'd talk about the dials on the dashboard. Yeah. Mm. So, um, Shall I just sketch this out for you, Ian, what, what, what I mean by that? Yeah, let's explain what we mean by the dials on the dashboard, yeah. yeah. Right, okay, so we all know what dials on a dashboard look like. We get in our car, we start it up, and at a glance we can see if we've got enough fuel to get us where we're going, how fast we're travelling, um, which direction we're going in, if the temperature is okay for the engine, and we don't need to really think about those dials at all, unless something changes on the way. You glance down and realise you're actually out of fuel. And then the alarms will start ringing and saying you need to fill up. So we're familiar with those dashboards and we can have the same idea in life. And when I think we first discussed this when we were in Paris working on our first book, Zoom together, and we were sitting in a cafe on a corner. I think you reminded me, drinking coffee, no doubt. And we started to talk about through the lens of a business startup. What, are, what things are very important for a business startup to be doing rather than just planning a five-year plan for a business? What, when you're doing, what things can you apply that will make a difference? And one of the things we talked about was this idea of creating a dashboard. We said, just like a car, you can select what dials you will put on your dashboard. And we've kind of said there's, there's sort of three or four that are worth putting on there. You want a happiness dial, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's the state of happiness? You want a financial dial, a money dial, and you want maybe a relationship dial. And they are literally just with a needle that if it's the needle is to the left, mm-hmm. things aren't good. And if the needle to the right, things are good. And the idea is, is that you don't just do this in your head where you can update it in real time as you wish. You do it on a piece of paper. And so you can go back to it every day if you like and look at it and see if the dials have moved and if they're not the very act of seeing it there written down in black and white gives you the opportunity to say well what do i need to do to move that dial so if the happiness dial is low what do you need to do it now um, we were talking we were riffing the other day about you know your experience in 2012 where you didn't have the dials and it wasn't until you had your meeting with your accountant that things really became sort of clear to you where you were. And that was mm. a sort of 12-month pass. And, and uh, just remind me of that story, Ian. Uh, a, a moment for me was, and I think, I, I think it was 2012. I can't be sure the exact year, to be honest. I have to look back. But uh, I went to see my accountant. And my accountant is a five-minute walk from where I'm sitting now, probably even less. A lovely guy, David a neighborhood accountant here and I went to see him to look at my uh, management accounts for the year before and uh, I walked into his office and it was like walking into the headmaster's study you know I, I, felt I, I was, my head was hung low and I think his opening gambit was I mean he's a lovely guy his opening gambit was well oh dear this wasn't a good year was it and I was like you know I was like it was like the little boy in the headmaster's study I was like shaking my head and yeah and I, t- I told him the reasons why I'd had some lost this project and this thing that was going to happen didn't convert and it was a difficult year commercially difficult year financially and you know when I walked out of there and I walked the short distance back home I think it was like a late morning appointment so I came back home for kind of lunch and I walked back home I was feeling really down because he'd be a nice guy about it but I was like that year was bad you know and uh, I came into the house and told my wife told Zoe she went, what? what, you know, what's the matter? And I went, well, I've just been talking to David about, you know, the financial year that's just, just ended and, uh, you know, kind of how bad it was. She said to me, hang on a minute. Didn't you say that the last year had been like one of the happiest in your life? Didn't you say all those wonderful things we'd done as a family? The kids were much younger. 
all those things we'd been able to do. We'd had a lovely summer. We'd been getting outside and you'd been working on your book. And, and I was like, yeah, of course. You know, that was how I'd really felt about my life over that 12 month period. It'd been one of the best in my life. Yet just looking solely at the financial dial, as is my accountant's job, that's why I pay him, um, I'd lost sight of the other dials. And it was a real wake up call, David. It was a real eye opener to think about what really matters. And around that time, I started a, a ritual. I started a habit that in my moleskins, um, I write a list. So I have the moleskin going one way, just the normal notes at the front, and I turn it round. And the other, the other way round, I, uh, I write a list and I call it good times. And I start it on a Monday morning and I end it on a Sunday night. And I write down um, all the good things that happen in my life. Work, personal, family, everything in one list. I don't separate it out. And I just crank out a list and I add to it every day. If I've got a busy day, I won't do it to the end of the day. But I'm, I'm adding to it all the time. I'd be like, you know, having a call with David, jumping on a call early with someone else. You know, went for a walk first thing in the morning. Had an amazing meal, that first coffee of the day. All those things, right? And what that's done... It's doing my good times list. That's like my, that's like my most important dial on my dashboard. It's like the happiness, the health, everything all into one dashboard about a talk really going well, all the stuff that's gone well. And what that's given me over all these years, I've got all this data, this big data of, of, of readings on a dashboard for what I'm feeling about my life and the good times. I'm not writing down the crap times. I'm only writing down the good times. I think what that habit's done for me over these years, it's, it's, it's optimized my brain and my mindset to be always scanning for the positive. And um, yeah. it's, a, it's a wonderful, simple habit. And it's, a, it's a very powerful, positive habit to have. Why? Well, if we look at the way um, humans have managed to exist and evolve so far, it's not because we've always had this... Um, positive outlook we actually negatively forecast that's what we naturally do so when we hear a bang in the street we all duck yeah mm -hmm. we, we we're always aware and that's how we've managed to survive because we're not the fastest creature on the planet yeah a tiger could easily catch me and eat me but I'm always looking out for danger and so that negative forecasting can end up being a dominant force at work and we start only seeing the things we got wrong and we've all had conversations where we've walked away think, walking away thinking i wish i didn't say that and then we, we focus on the one tiny thing that we said that we maybe shouldn't have said or could have framed better and that becomes our um you know our only thought process to take away from it whereas if you physically write it down if you write it down what you're doing is you have this list as you know you can go back to and in the, even in the fiercest fiercest of negative forecasting you can look and go but hang on I had, a, I had a great meal with zoe last night and i played with the kids and that was great fun and i really enjoyed that moment but we had we know how negatively forecasting can quickly take over and become the dominant force what the dashboard does is it enables you first of all to see those broken out parts so so you don't you know, not just worrying about money now and we'll come to how you fix things so you can see the dashboard you can see where you are financially and you can put your own dials in you can see where you are happiness and put mental health on there as well it's something that we are beginning to talk about as people now and we should be talking about it openly mm. okay relationships are incredibly important yeah and not just our relationships with directly with our family with our work colleagues and our and our, and our peers and people we're working with. And there's, uh, if you're an organization, if you're a business, you could look at putting things like, um, you know, what's your supply chain? Where's the dial on that right now? Is it, is it good? Is it bad? Maybe you're looking at market trends. Maybe you're, in, you know, you need to know politically, globally, what's going on because that's going to impact on your business. And when you start laying those dials out and every day you're going in and looking at where you are, something begins to happen. And that something is, you don't just notice that your, let's say, your happiness dial is going down. Your mind goes to work to try and solve the problem and figure out how it can move that dial. 
Yeah, that's what the brain is really good at. Give it a problem and it will go away whilst you're still sleeping. Mm. It will try and solve it. Mm. So if you have a problem in the rationale, thought, negatively forecasting of the moment, feels overwhelming and is impossible to deal with, when it's marked on that dial, you see it going down, you can ask yourself this simple question. What one small thing can I do now to make a difference? And if it's a financial one, we know a lot of people have lost their salaries. And there's a lot of people that, um, there's, the, there's the unspoken mass as well. There were, um, the, there were direct directors of uh, limited companies and are entitled to anything. There's a lot of people in the wrong gap of, of losing their job in the wrong window. There's a lot of people that have just lost everything. And that's overwhelming. Now, when you break it down and go, what one small thing can I do to move the dial? It could be, well, I will contact my credit card company and say, we need to pause. I can contact the leasing company and find out what options there are for me today. I can contact my mortgage company and say, we need to take the mortgage holiday. I can let my um, suppliers of electricity and internet, I can let them know. So I've, uh, I've put it out there and they know that this isn't something that I'm going to be able to resolve today. So we can start moving that dial and then you can rub out the needle and add the new needle in and hopefully it will start moving in the right direction. If it's not, ask yourself again, what one small thing can I do? And that helps you focus on the small parts. And then you can walk at work across that and try and move all those dials in the right direction. And when you've got so your can first I three, ask, Can I just ask, because I think there's a sense of, I'm just trying to get a feel for how many dials there might be. Because I don't want to, I mean, yeah. I, 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 I think there's a sense of, I'm getting, getting, getting a clear vision from you here. And I'm just thinking about how I work personally, that one doesn't want to kind of be overwhelmed with these. So, 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 so what does this actually feel like in terms of how many dials we, we, you know, we might be having and we might be looking at? Otherwise, it might feel like, haven't I forgotten about this one over here and this one over there? And the whole point is it's simple and clear, right? So, yeah. You know, what is on your mind right now? That's the first big, you know, deal with the elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. don't 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 do dials about whether your plants are growing wonderfully in the garden and if the the chimney needs repointing when the actual elephant in the room is a financial one a relationship one a mm -hmm. business one yeah get those ones out three is plenty enough okay if you're making three things move in the right direction in a small way every day you're going to see a huge impact over time and over time as you start to straighten those out you may then start bringing into the the four well actually now i want to look at a um, new business I've, I've parked it a little bit and now i want to bring it and that dial back in and new business for a lot of us won't be like new business it was two months ago yeah now i'm talking to my clients um about how can we be useful not us as an age how can they be useful and they are you know being really useful for their end users. So it's less about sell, 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 and it's more about how do we help. So we can start bringing in these new dials. But I think um, what's really important is don't have too many. If one dial is enough for you right now, and you can do one dial, then do one dial. Um, it would be tempting to do five, but do three tops. Okay, that's good. That doesn't, that doesn't feel overwhelming. Yeah. Shouldn't be for you. <laughs> and, and, it, and it is that asking that, and I, and I think what you're talking about that list you're doing it's very powerful you're doing the same thing with, with these dials is whatever you do don't do it in your head you've got mm. to write it down mm. the power of seeing it mm. is that is the will help you make the real change you can see you could come up with that list for you the back of your mole skin in your head every day but you know it only really counts when you write it down because some of your moleskins are 10, 12 years old and you won't remember that list. But now when you look back, when you reflect, you can see the real difference you've made and you can chuckle to yourself and say, I've come a long way mm. of making a difference. Mm. Whereas when we're caught in a negative forecasting frame of mind, we are not going a long way and we're not making much of a difference. I like that. Can I ask you something about... Um stories and i'm not sure whether stories fit in this dashboard but what occurs to me is that you and i are both 
real advocates of the power of stories and storytelling. And what I'm curious about is the stories we tell ourselves. So um, one thing that you helped me see, uh, you said it when we had a phone call a few weeks ago, was, uh, was, the, was, was reminding me about some of the experiences I've been through in my working life and how they've taught me to be really good at dealing with curveballs, about how they've been really good at teaching me to pivot, how they've been really good at riding uncertainty. And it's good to be reminded of those stories I've got in my life, because when this came along on Friday the 13th of March and suddenly my business landscape changed and, and everything changed, I could remind myself that I've got the stories, I've got stories and experiences in my head that have shown me that I'm good at dealing with these kind of things before. Now, I'm not quite sure where they necessarily fit in the dashboard, but how can we, um, how can we build and navigate uh, and, and take the unplanning mindset through these difficult times by looking at our stories and experiences that we've had in the past and how that might help fuel us on that journey? Might not be one for the dashboard, but where does that sit? So stories, as you rightly said, the, the narratives we tell ourselves are what we believe and they, they are what's guide us. Those narratives behind those sit our values. And I think in, in episode number five, um, we will look at stories and values. And we look at how do you create your personal story? Yeah, how do, you, how do you find your personal story? How do you create it? And how do you use it to leverage you forward? Because you're absolutely right. How does that feel with the, with the dashboard? Well, those dashboards are creating your new narrative. Mm, mm. yeah and if your new narrative is i am making things better i am improving on my life on my business on my relationships every day then that is a fantastic positive narrative to carry with you yeah yeah uh, and we'll look at values as well we'll put a link um if that's all right ian at the end of this uh, um chat to the TEDx talk I did on um, creating your own story. Some people may find that useful, mm. but we will unpack it more uh, in, uh, in episode five of the Unplanners, and we'll look at values as well, because you're, you, you touched on something very, very important. And I was gonna say, when you're looking at the dashboard dials, if you already have some values that you stand by, that you're very aware of, put one of those down as your mm. three, mm. yeah? One of my values, is innovation. Now, that's, my, that's a deep value of mine. I didn't really realize it until a, a few years ago. It goes all the way back to when I was a child. Deep value of mine, and it's one of my dials on the dashboard. Am I innovating in some small way each day? Because first of all, it's something I can do, so I don't have to struggle to do it. You know, sometimes finances are difficult to deal with because things are slightly out of our control. Sometimes relationships are a two-way thing, but my personal a love of innovation is something I'm in control of. And so I know I can make a difference on that dial. And when I see myself making a difference on one dial, I have the self-belief and the passion to make a difference on the next dial. So when we are start, if you have a value that you know and you, uh, is, is true to you, then put that one on there so that you can uh, see a positive impact straight away. Cool, I like that. Well, look, I feel like uh, we should put a little cutaway up now of a little screen grab of your notepad where perhaps you can just visualize this for us with, with a few dials might be helpful. Let's stick that up. Um, yeah, I like that. Well, look, I think the, um, you're right. The dashboard was something that we talked about in our third book, Zoom, the faster way to make your business idea happen. And you're, you're, you're right. I can remember very clearly us. We, we went to Paris to write that book and we're sitting in a cafe and you opened my eyes. To the power of the dashboard and I think uh, I love that I love that vision sitting in a vehicle you know navigating the uh, uncertainty we find ourselves in now and I think you know it's very important that you have the dials on the dashboard uh, that really matter so I think that's um, I think that's really helpful um, so I'm gonna just hold it up for those that uh, are viewing I'm, I'm holding yeah. up my very roughly sketched out that's all you need yeah. you know, I've just got my three dials on there for those that are listening on the podcast you know, it is, think of your fuel gauge. It's the, yeah. the, the classic looking fuel gauge. It's a circle and empty is on the left and full is on the right. Yeah. You are not trying to accurately get this down. You're trying to get a feel. Go with how it makes you feel. Do you feel it's good? Yeah. Uh, and work with that. That's enough. I think, um, I think the dashboard is really powerful. 
why we need a dashboard all the time but what why is the dashboard so important with an unplanning mindset why should an unplanner have the dashboard as one of their key tools and how they navigate their life tell me that when we first presented the idea of unplanning in uh, austin texas in 2010 we asked the audience to put their hands up and tell us how many of those business owners had a business plan and i think about 60 percent of the hands went up yeah and we also wonder how many people looked at their business plans in the last year i don't think any hands went up <laughs> maybe one or two felt guilty they should put them up because maybe their vc guy was sitting at the other end of the room but in all honesty the problem with the planning is once you've written it you kind of put it in a drawer or a box or a file and you save it and it's done the difference is with unplanners when you've got a dashboard you're looking at it all the time because mm -hmm. thing you accept you know things are going to change tomorrow may not be like yesterday so this dial needs looking at all the time the petrol does run out on the car whereas with the five-year plan it's set in stone why would i need to look at it again i predicted everything and of course we, we can't predict we can only forecast there's no prediction so we put it in the drawer because we don't want to look at it again this big five-year plan because we know it's never ever going to play out that way so best just bury that away somewhere whereas with the dashboard dials every day we've been reminded every hour we've been reminded every time we look at it we're going what small thing can i do today that will make a difference not what small thing can i write in in five years time on a spreadsheet that will make a difference that won't but what you do today will hey i like that well look, that's a nice and simple i think we brought it back for people why this matters for the unplanned forget the business plan have the dashboard give that a go what are we going to talk about next week david next week we're talking about um agility the agile mindset how do we as unplanners bring about the mindset that's required to not just muddle through an unplanned life in a state of semi-fear but to own it and really push forward with positivity. I love that. That's what we're going to be doing next time. Thank you very much for tuning in to the Unplanners and uh, see you next time. Thanks. Thank you.